In this video, we will look at some of the qualitative methods of forecasting. Generally, forecasting is based on the analysis done on historical data. However, sometimes the historical data may not be available, such as when a new product is introduced or when technology has changed etc. In those situations, companies rely on management judgment and experience to generate forecasts. Let us look at some of the most commonly used qualitative techniques. The first one is sales force estimates. Generally, companies divide the geographic area of their business into regions and place their sales force in these regions. Let's say there is a company in the US which has its headquarters somewhere here and the company would typically divide the area into multiple regions. Let's say they call this as R1, R2, R3, R4 and so on. Now each of these regions would have some sales force assigned. So there will be a regional sales manager and he will have a team responsible for sales in that region. So the sales force of a company is in direct contact with the customers in that particular region and hence they have a good understanding of the future demands of their customers. Hence the sales force can be asked to give their estimates about the likely sales of the products in their region. Now generally they are asked to submit three estimates of the expected demand. First is the optimistic which is the highest expected demand. Second is the most likely this will have the highest chance of occurrence and third is pessimistic that is the lowest expected demand. Now the marketing manager sitting in this headquarters will collect these estimates from all the regions and compile them to arrive at the overall forecasted demand for the product. So this is how Salesforce estimates are taken in order to forecast for the future periods. Now this technique has its disadvantages too. As this technique relies on the judgment of the salespeople the individual biases of the salespeople may affect the forecast. The salespeople may also mistake a customer's wish list as a necessary need. Also, if the performance appraisals of sales personnel is linked with achieving sales targets, they may give lower predictions of demand in order to easily achieve those targets and make their performance look better. Now let us look at the second method. So the second method is executive opinion. Now when a new product or service is launched, the sales force may not be able to make accurate demand estimates. In those circumstances, executive opinion is sought in order to do forecasting. Executive opinion is a forecasting method 
in which the opinion or experiences of one or more managers are combined in order to arrive at a single forecast. So how is it done? A jury of top executives of the company from different functional areas such as marketing, finance, human resources, production, etc. are brought together to give their opinion about the forecast of a new product to be launched. The disadvantage of this approach is that there is a risk that the opinion of any one individual expressed in an impressive manner may overshadow the opinion of other experts. So basically in this method a jury of top executives from marketing, production, finance, etc. are brought together to seek their opinion. The third method is customer survey or market research. Basically, your customers are the ones who determine the demand for a product or service. Therefore, it is useful to involve the customers directly in the forecasting process. However, as we may not know who our new customers will be, we need to select a few customers as a sample population. So first step is to select a sample population of customers. Now in order to receive their feedback, questionnaires can be designed. The questions need to be framed properly in order to get the accurate response from customers. So the next step could be to gather their feedback using questionnaires. Now surveys can be time consuming and expensive. And at the same time, they may provide valuable information about the customer's changing preferences, which may not be easily available elsewhere. The fourth method is the Delphi method. The Delphi method is a process of gaining consensus from a group of experts while maintaining their anonymity. This method is useful when there is no historical data from which to develop statistical models and when managers inside the firm have no experience on which to base their projections. So basically the first step is to form a group of experts and keep their names anonymous. So nobody in the group knows who else is participating. So in this method, a questionnaire is then sent out to the group of experts who are from various diversified streams. And the experts are then asked to provide their opinion of the forecast. So the next step is to send questionnaires. Now, an example could be for a forecast to predict the year by which the electric cars are going to dominate the car industry. So, now this method 
is different from that used in executive opinion as here the experts may not necessarily be the top executives also the individual experts are not permitted to interact with each other and their participation is kept anonymous now once the experts fill out these questionnaires the administrator then collects the results from all the participants and tabulates the results into quartiles so collect and tabulate this tabulated findings are then sent back to the experts and are asked to reconsider their answers in light of the new information also those whose opinions fall in the two outside quartiles are asked to justify their opinions so next step is to again redistribute the results and ask for feedback now all this information from the second round is again tabulated and once again returned to the participants so again we recollect the information tabulate it and redistribute the results to the participants now this time each participant who remains outside the middle two quartiles may be asked to provide an argument as to why the others may be incorrect so this process is continued through several more iterations until a consensus has been reached so reach consensus so these are the four most frequently used qualitative methods of forecasting